On your check ride, the examiner is expecting you to have a discussion about spin awareness. And you have to understand what makes the airplane spin. You have to be able to explain how to recover from a spin and also what situations may cause an inadvertent spin even though we know all this information. So we just talked about stalls and what makes an airplane stall. And when you stall an airplane, as long as the tail stays behind the nose, whether you're going straight or you're in a coordinated turn, when the airplane stalls, both wings stall the same, so the nose would just drop straight forward. The problem arises when the tail is no longer behind the nose. So let's say you were doing a stall and you pitched the airplane up, but you were holding too much rudder and one wing moved faster through the air than the other wing. At the point that the wings Meet, meet the critical angle of attack. When the relative wind strikes from underneath the airplane because you've pitched it up too high, then the wings are going to stall. But because this outer wing moves faster through the air because you're uncoordinated, this outer wing creates a little bit of lift. Both wings are still stalled, but this outer wing moving faster through the air creates just a little bit of lift and causes a rolling motion in the airplane. Now we need to look at each wing independently to see how the angle of attack is affected. When this wing, this lower wing or inside wing drops, the relative wind changes. Originally, the relative wind came from here, that's what caused the stall. But when that wing dropped suddenly, the relative wind changed positions. Remember, the relative wind is opposite the flight path. So if the wing drops, opposite its flight path would be from underneath. So we already had um, a, a pretty sharp angle of attack, or we've exceeded our critical angle of attack, and now when the wing drops, we've worsened that angle of attack, and we deepen the stall in that wing. Let's look and see what happens to the upper wing. The wing stalled because we met the critical angle of attack, but because it moved faster through the air and generated a little bit of lift, it caused to rise. When the, the wing rose, it changed the relative wind. So where the relative wind was from here, for example, it shifted to up here. And that um, helps it a little bit. You know, it, it makes it produce more lift. But because this wing is very deeply stalled and this wing is still stalled, it creates a rollover motion. Now, the way that our uh, vertical stabilizer and our rudder tend to weather vane into the oncoming wind and your airplane is simply falling while it's rolling, it will weather vane into the oncoming wind. This sets up an auto rotation or a spin around your vertical axis. Wherever your center of gravity was, that's where the airplane will rotate around in this spin. The spin will continue until you stop it. Now, how you want to recover from a spin is we want to simultaneously pull the throttle to idle, make our ailerons neutral, and then use full opposite rudder to stop the spin. Remember, it was the rudder that got us in this, it's the rudder that's going to recover this. So once we simultaneously throttle idle, ailerons neutral, and then full opposite rudder to stop the spin, now we're just in a stall and we're just falling. And since we're falling you know, straight down, we need to recover from the stall. We need to uh, pitch the airplane down just momentarily to reattach the wind to the wing so we can fly again. So once we've stopped the spin, we need to recover from the stall just momentarily and then recover from the dive. The reason the airplane was diving was because while it was stalled, it's just free falling to the ground. So the, the gravity pulling us down is, is pulling us down very quickly. So in order to recover at the end, we end up having to recover out of a dive. That is why we need to pull the throttle back to idle because we don't want to um, gain so much airspeed at the end and exceed our V&E, our never exceed speed, and uh, cause structural damage to the airplane. Now the reason we need our ailerons neutral is we have to remember what adverse yaw is and what adverse yaw does. If the airplane was spinning to the left, for example, and you try to use right ailerons to recover, the left aileron comes down, and when that left aileron comes down into the wind, then it creates drag, and it would yaw the airplane harder into that spin. So we definitely want the throttle idle, we definitely want the ailerons neutral, and we have to recover from the spin with opposite rudder. And then recover from your 
uh, stall and then recover from the dive. If the airplane were spinning to the right, it would require left rudder to recover. If the airplane were spinning to the left, it would require right rudder to recover. Not all airplanes are meant to spin, and many airplanes need to be at least in the utility category to demonstrate a spin entry and spin recovery. Also, if you've spun one airplane, it doesn't mean that the next airplane you spin will have the same spin characteristics. Uh, some airplanes are difficult to get in a spin, and some airplanes spin really easy and very, very quickly. So each airplane is going to have its own spin characteristic. But don't purposely stall, uh, don't purposely spin an aircraft um, unless you're obviously with your instructor and um, you know you you know that the airplane is capable to recover from that spin. Now you're also responsible to know where do inadvertent spins occur, and there's basically four places that your examiner wants you to understand. The first place may be in a situation where you were flying along and your engine quit. And the landing site you picked, or the landing site you chose, is too far away. So you attempt to stretch your glide to make that, that landing field. And in your attempt to stretch the glide, you continue to pitch the airplane up. Now remember, if you fly anything faster or slower than your best glide speed, the airplane will go down faster anyways. So you always should hold your best glide speed. But anyway, if you try to pitch up to stretch your glide, and then as you, if you pitched up, and in the, in the process became uncoordinated for some reason, not paying attention or being afraid, um, and you stalled the airplane like that, you might get an inadvertent spin. So trying to stretch your uh, glide in an emergency situation is one situation that inadvertent spins continue to happen. Um, the other situation could be on takeoff or departure. If you departed the runway and again your load shifted or your seat track broke loose for some reason, or uh, maybe you didn't have the airplane trim properly, and the airplane pitched up suddenly on you. In a single engine airplane, remember, it pitches up and goes to the left. So if it pitches up and yaws to the left and you didn't control that, it would go right into a spin and there's no time to recover. The third scenario could be where you're coming in for landing. So you're coming in for landing, you have the, your flaps in, the airplane is trimmed for a slight nose high picture, and for whatever reason, you need to suddenly go around. Maybe an airplane pulled out in front of you, or maybe a, a deer was on the runway or something. So in your effort to go around, you add full throttle suddenly. Well, in a single engine airplane, the airplane will pitch up and yaw to the left if you don't control it. Because what you needed to do is simultaneously add the power with some right rudder and watch your pitch attitude. That's why we practice go arounds continually so you are you know, mentally prepared for the force of that airplane when you uh, go around. Okay, finally, the most popular um, inadvertent spin results from overshooting base to final. So what happens is if a person is on base and they want to turn final, but perhaps the wind is blowing from this direction, and the airplane was blown too far away. They call it overshooting based to final. So if a person overshot based to final, they would have to use rudder and aileron uh, pretty strongly to bring the airplane back to the center line. But many people don't like to bank that steeply, or shouldn't bank that steeply, that close to the ground. So subconsciously, they will take some ailerons out, but still use the rudder to pull the airplane's nose toward the runway. Now remember, you cannot steer the airplane by rudder. So what happens is by using the rudder to pull the nose to the runway, the side of the airplane goes into the wind, which creates a great deal of drag. And if you increase all that drag on the airplane, it's going to start descending. But you're very close to the ground, so you, perhaps you start pulling. So you have left rudder, and you start pulling. And if you pull it into a stall right there, it will go right upside down into a spin. And to summarize, summarize the uh, four inadvertent spin accidents that continue to happen, even though we understand and know all this good information that you should be very aware of, would be trying to stretch your uh, glide speed, excuse me, stretch your glide path in an emergency situation, um, having a stall on departure, having a stall on a go around, or overshooting base to final.